What's up everyone, it's Simon here for a bit of a different video. Hope you're all well and keeping safe. So this is about football and obviously with the Premier League now, well finished, just the weekend just gone. Um, just sort of going to give you sort of why I sort of predicted at the start of the season and uh, sort of where they sort of ended up sort of thing. So uh, yeah, so obviously me, obviously if you haven't watched my videos on YouTube and like I say, uh, the videos are there, uh, Fat Boy size the name on YouTube, so... Please subscribe and like, greatly appreciate it, and obviously comments are all welcome. So I'll be doing a lot more of, sort of football videos in the future, and uh, sort of give you um, sort of updates and stuff hopefully as well. So let's get straight into it. So my predictions for the 2021 season, obviously a bit of a sort of pandemonium sort of season, obviously with the you know coronavirus sort of affecting a lot of things, and you not know, just football but other sports as well. Um, and obviously sort of loads of games in sort of so many you know so many days sort of thing. Obviously, with Man United, they had what four games in seven days, and they have something like that, which is ridiculous. But anyway, so let's get into my predictions. What I did predict at the start of the season. So in the relegations places, um, in Stone Cold last twentieth place, I had West Bromwich Albion. They ended up finishing nineteenth, but they were still relegated. Anyway, um, they come up obviously with the likes of Fulham and uh, Leeds, and then I thought it was going to be a struggle. Obviously. When you obviously get promoted to the Premiership, they sort of you know you have to spend a little bit of money. You have to take the gamble. I know it's you know the football's harsh these days, you know, sort of especially financial wise and stuff. And obviously, we've got what's going on. But sort of, I mean, I, there was an outstanding. Well, for me, there was a player who I sort of stood out for me, and that was that Pereira. Um, my you know the team who I support, I sort of been apparently sort of sniffing him and like linking him to the King Power Stadium. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so I put West Brom in 20, so I was one place out. So so in 19th, I had Fulham. Um, they ended up finishing 18th. Um, so well, in 19th, I had them, and 18th, they finished. I happened to get relegated. Um, I just think they struggled all season. They they picked up some good results along the way. Sort of similar to West Brom. I mean they got that West Brom got that was it five two or five three against Chelsea and and obviously Fulham got that well, let's not talk about it, shall we? Um <laughs> two 0 at the King Power, so great result for them. But uh, apart from that they didn't really offer that much. I mean they got a chap called Luckman who looks like a sort of half decent player. Mitrovic didn't didn't get really sort of played that much, um, which sort of shocked me a bit because I think he is a good player. But obviously, Scott Parker, the manager of Fulham, must have sort of seen something different. Anyway, so this is probably going to shock you a little bit for people uh, that you know are into football. Um, I actually had Newcastle to be relegated. It was very tight between sort of eighteenth to fifteenth. I'd say it could have been a toss up between any of them really. Um, I had Newcastle for the sheer facts of. It just you know I just didn't think that they're just they're just offering nothing in my eyes and uh, but they ended up finishing twelfth in the end so how massively I got that wrong so but fair play to them and sort of hopefully they sort of hopefully sort of obviously with the, all the problems going on behind the scenes with Mike Ashley and stuff and that lot and obviously this takeover that was supposed to happen you know the person who sort of had like two hundred and something billion um, was going to sort of take over but that sort of got blocked sort of thing. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so as I say, a bit harsh Newcastle fans, so sorry about that. <laughs> so there we go, so that's the relegation. So it was like I say, it was a very sort of nip and tight between sort of like I say, 15th to sort of 17th, 18th sort of thing. So in 17th, I actually got Burnley and they actually finished 17th, so I got one right. Um, very defensively solid, um, even though they sort of leaked a few goals towards the end. I mean, they got battered 4 0, I think, didn't they? Um, I can't remember who it was by. Um, they didn't really offer anything. Um, that was well, I mean, well, I say go back to Newcastle actually. I, I just sort of very quickly, I mean, the player obviously stands out for me in Newcastle was Callum Wilson, obviously. Um, just sort of very quickly throw that in. So, like I say, Burnley. Um, so they've got some decent players, um, I'm going to say Tarkovsky, uh, who was linked to obviously Leicester sort of before the season started. Um, probably the sort of, I don't know, probably their sort of best player, I think probably the season was probably Chris Wood. I mean, he banged a few goals in, um, not a lot, but he was Burnley not one for scoring loads of goals, just put it like that. Um, but anyway, so that's where I got Burnley and that's where they finished, so happy days. So. 
So in 16th, I had Brighton. Um, so yeah, and they finished 16th as well. So um, sort of an, I suppose, sort of another season just above relegation, I suppose, with Brighton. I mean, they got they had some decent players, you know. They've got Danny, uh, the sort of Danny Welbeck. Um, sort of, I don't know if he was on loan. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the standout, obviously, I think was probably Basuma, who's sort of been linked with some sort of some of the bigger clubs. No disrespect to Brighton. Um, you know, I'd happily take him at Leicester, but like I say, we're sort of linked with so many players, it's ridiculous. But yeah, so that's where I got Brighton. So in sort of 15th, I actually had Sheffield United. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, shocked really. Um, I even though usually when their team gets promoted from the championship, the first season, well, it's, they they did obviously fantastic, you know, because they finished pretty high in the table. Um, and usually with the promoted side, usually the second season syndrome, as they sort of call it, they tend to sort of struggle, um, and they did. And obviously now they are relegated. Um, I had them, obviously, like I said, I had them 15th and they finished stone cold bottom of the league and didn't really offer anything. Not really any players that stood out for me at all, really. You know, Sheffield United, um, well, I know it's horrible and blunt to say, but that's just the way it is, isn't it? So, oh well, never mind, never mind. So in 14th, I had Crystal Palace and they actually finished 14th. So another one I got right, surprisingly. Um, Palace very sort of inconsistent side they'll get a sort of one good result and then they'll go and sort of lose three or four on the bounce get a draw and then win one lose two or three on the bounce get a draw then get another win you know it's sort of so inconsistent it's, it's weird really because they've got a couple of sort of half decent players you know they've got Benteke um, obviously Wilfred Zaha who's well don't let me get started on him such a whinge bag, um, so and uh, yeah, and uh, and the chap they got, I think, from QPR called Eze, I think it was. I think they got him from QPR, and he sort of stood out for me, sort of thing. So a really, really good player. So that's where I had Palace. So in thirteenth, um, I actually, I mean, this was sort of tough between sort of like the mid table, sort of like sort of ninth to sort of twelfth, thirteenth, sort of thing. It was sort of quite hard. I actually had Aston Villa thirteenth. Um, and they finished 11th. So obviously the standout performer, probably one of my sort of plays of the season, even though he was out majority of the season. Um, but he was brilliant while he was on the pitch. Obviously he was Jack Grealish, fantastic player. I'd be surprised, no disrespect to Villa, they are a big club. I'd be surprised if he's there next year. But then again, you know, if they've got aspirations to sort of, you know, kick on sort of thing, bring a couple of players in, help sort of like, you know, build around sort of like Jack Grealish and stuff and then sort of, you know, and obviously Ollie Watkins as well, who's who was linked with obviously my club, Leicester City. Um, should I say the team I support? Um, and obviously, uh, yeah, so two very good players there. Um, well, which will be exciting to see what happens, I suppose, with Villa next year. Who knows? So in 12th, I had Southampton and they actually finished 15th. They started off really, really well. Um, they saw me in the top four at one point, I think they were. They start really, really well. Um, manager, I think he's a he's a very good manager. I can't I can't pronounce his name, so don't even. Is it Hassan Hutu? I think his name is. I'm not too sure. Probably got that wrong. Um, yeah, and they ended up finishing fifteenth. So sort of a bit of a, I know sort of a bit of a brain fart on that one. I was sort of quite far out, but they had some. Good, they got like I say, they got some good players. Um, obviously James Ward Prowse for me is is well it's just literally a free kick taker and set piece taker. I don't think he's any more than that. He's a good player still though. Um, I'll be surprised if he's not moving away from Southampton in the sort of next year or two because I think he'll want to move on and get into Europe and to, you know sort of go to sort of like you know sort of a top. So I'd say probably sixth sort of like between sixth and eighth sort of like side sort of thing. Sort of like a sort of like Everton or. Or even a Leicester surprise, so you never know. But anyway, so that is Southampton. So in 11th, I had Leeds United. And obviously, welcome back to Leeds United. Um, very, very exciting to watch. Very, very good to watch. Sort of enjoyed watching them really in, in a weird way. Like I say, um, you know, I've got a mate who... Well, I've got a couple of friends who support Leeds and that. And, uh, and they're sort of like, you know... <laughs> they're sort of giving it all sort of thing. And neither of us are those sort of you know, doing really, really well and then sort of faded off and they were sort of another team that was sort of inconsistent and 
Um, and obviously some standout players, obviously, um, obviously uh, with Leeds, um, you know, with Patrick Bamford. Um, there was another chap as well. I can't remember his name. So apologies to Leeds United fans. Um, so yeah, probably stand up form was probably Bamford, but uh, yeah, and obviously, like I said, I had him finishing 11th and they ended up finishing 9th, so fair play to them. So, a top half finish, and they'll probably be looking to build on what they did uh, this season. So, looking forward to see what they do. So, in 10th, I had Wolves, um, and ended up finishing 13th. So, so I just thought, I mean, I, I thought they would do sort of mid table I thought they would I don't think they would have got any higher than that personally um, probably obviously their main striker Raul Jimenez who was obviously out with uh, that really bad head injury um, you know and that's sort of affecting obviously with Jota sort of not being there anymore obviously him being at Liverpool and it's sort of affecting and they've still got some sort of uh, good players they've got obviously Ruben Neves um, you know um, Joel Martino and stuff you know, they, they've got some good players there Still, but pff, I don't know. It's it's it was going to be a tough season. I thought, and I thought, well, mid table, will they take it? I would have thought they would have taken that. Um, so if, and they ended up finishing thirteenth in the end. So, so sort of slightly surprised, but sort of not surprising as well. But like I say, it was really tough to choose between sort of like mid table to like from like ninth to sort of like twelfth, thirteenth sort of thing. Anyway, so going into like I say. Um, let's say going to uh, ninth, I actually had West Ham and they had a brilliant season. They finished sixth and uh, qualified for the Europa League. So, fair play to West Ham, a very good season for them. Obviously, they're probably a little bit disappointed, um, because at one point they were sort of they were actually in the top four, they were third, I think, at one point or fourth, and they were doing really, really well. And then, sort of slowly, the last five, six games, they sort of slowly faded away. Um, they gave us a bit of a tonkin, um, so but that's been no surprise. <laughs> um, but yeah, very good season. Obviously, with Jesse Lingard being on loan at West Ham, um, they they he had an absolute cracking season. Sort of had a bit of a U-turn in form. You know, um, be interesting to see what happens within next season. Does he go back to Manchester United? Uh, wait, will he return to Manchester United? Will he be playing? Will he be signed by somebody else? If I. I'd love to have him at Leicester, to be brutally honest. I know he's been had a lot of criticism that a lot before, but you can sort of see the real sort of potential of him um, sort of shine through at West Ham. So it'd be nice to sort of see him, I suppose, move away from Old Trafford. And I think there'll be sort of less pressure because obviously when you play for Man United, there's massive pressure. So anyway, so fair play to West Ham for finishing sixth. So in eighth, I actually had Everton and they ended up finishing tenth. So... Surprise, really, to be fair, because obviously with Carl Ancelotti involved, I thought obviously, you know, he signed some sort of big, big players. So obviously, they still had sort of like the likes of Sigurdsson, and they've got Hammers in um, from Real Madrid. Um, and obviously, Calvert Lewin obviously found some really good form at the start of the season, sort of, sort of faded away towards the end of the season. And obviously, the chap called Allen as well. Um, it was really good, and obviously, you know, they got some really, really good players. Rick Carlson as well, who, well, it can be very good on his day, but then again, he is a bit of a so-and-so whinge bag, anyway. Um, but anyway, so, but yeah, no, so, so I suppose in a way they're probably a little bit disappointed, obviously, because they had a sort of chance, and they had some um, losses towards sort of the end of the season, which they shouldn't have had, and should have probably got top. So I reckon they should have been seventh or sixth at least, um, but obviously I had them for eighth. And they ended up finishing 10th, so there we go. So, going into 7th place, um, this will probably shock you, but then again, you'll see, well, you see why, where they ended up finishing anyway. Um, I actually had Arsenal in 7th. Um, oh, so it's a shame to sort of see them sort of, the, the sort of, the last sort of few years, they've sort of really have been sort of pretty poor, even sort of towards the end of Wenger, uh, Wenger's reign. There wasn't the greatest teams, but they were still producing results and they were still getting top fours and European football, you know, and fair play to them. Um, so, yeah, so in the end, they didn't get any uh, European footballs. I think it's like the first time in like 20, over like well over 20 years, or something like 24, 25 years or something like that. Um, but they have got some outstanding players. That, well, they've got a couple of good players there. I mean, obviously, they've got a Bamiyang. He didn't really hit anything this year. I mean, well, the only thing they hit this year was the floor, but there we go. Um, 
Lacassette, very disappointing, even though he did get a few goals for them. Probably the, my favourite player to watch from there was probably Saka. Um, such a great talent, young English talent again. And looking, hopefully, um, I don't think he's going to make the Euros, but uh, he's a, you know, such a young age, he's, you know, a young head on old shoulder sort of thing. Um, but that's where I had Arsenal and ended up finishing eighth, so I wasn't sort of far out, so... Um, there we go. So, in sixth place, I actually had my own club, Leicester City, finishing sixth, and they ended up finishing fifth. Heartbreaking as it was, obviously, with the last day of the season. It was in Leicester's hands with 16 minutes to go. They were 2 1 up against uh, Tottenham, and we ended up blowing losing 4 2. So, I think when the goal went in, second goal went in for Tottenham, I think the heads were down and they just gave up, and, and that was it. And, I'm disappointed because they were top four all season until literally the last day. So I'm, I'm gutted in a way, but obviously with them winning the FA Cup, um, you know, obviously I was sort of happy. You know, I, I would have taken at the start of the season, you know, top six in the FA Cup, I would have taken it. Um, but very disappointed as well, obviously, because it was in our hands again and we obviously bottled it again like we did last year. But anyway, so, so going into now the sort of, Pretty much the sort of nitty gritty. In fifth place, I did actually have Tottenham Hotspur. Oh dear, where do we start with them? Anyway, so very sort of disappointed. I think Tottenham were very disappointed season. They had Bale in on loan for the season. Didn't sort of really perform. He shone in a couple of games, but then no disrespect to the teams like in the bottom half. He's going to shine against like the teams against like, like you know Burnley and Newcastle and all that. Like, any. Anyway, so. No disrespect to them clubs, anyway, but like I say, but yeah, so they're sort of disappointing. Um, obviously, they were sort of looking for, obviously, I'd imagine they're probably targets in Champions League, obviously, with Jose Mourinho involved. And then, sort of, for some really known reason, they sack him a few days before the uh, Carabao Cup final, which made absolutely no sense, but this is Tottenham, so, you know, the so-called big club. Anyway. So, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, and obviously, with Harry Kane leaving and, now sort of leaving and he's now sort of come and said he's now leaving uh, be interesting to see where he goes and uh, yeah who knows my predictions he will be in Man United next year but that's just my predictions anyway so or possibly Chelsea so going into the Champions League spots and it's probably come as no surprise really um, I had Manchester United in fourth and he ended up finishing second so a sort of a bit. It's been a weird season all round, really. Obviously, with the COVID sort of thing, anyway. But like I say, Man United finishing second. They're gonna be more than happy to take that. Some great players there. I've got some absolute talent in there. So, you know, obviously with Rashford, what he's done on and off the pitch, and I can only applaud him for what he's done on the pitch. Great player. Obviously with Cavani coming in, very very good player. I I said I don't care what age he is. He's still a quality player. It's like when they brought Zlatan in, quality player still produced. Um, give him a sniff of a chance and he'll put it in the net and he did basically and obviously probably the standout performer for them was probably Fernandez, I suppose um, but they still sort of have a bit of goalkeeper trouble um, which I think they're probably sort of don't know what they're going to do and obviously I think they're only probably two or three players away from getting a probably probably challenging uh, Man City for the league next season um, and obviously if they can get Kane in I think they'll be contenders but obviously, you know, to win titles, you're going to need defences. So they're going to need probably another centre-back and probably another sort of midfielder, I think. Um, defensive midfielder anyway, because, the you know, Matic is getting old, but Tomlin is just not good enough. Um, so I think a defensive midfielder, striker and defence uh, centre-back, I think they'll be pretty good and challenging Liber uh, the likes of Man City and Liverpool next year. So in third place, I actually had Chelsea uh, and they ended up finishing fourth. So... Sort of like I say, even though they sort of lost the last lot, I don't know, they lot. who did they lose to? They sort of, well, they lost to us in the FA Cup final, but like I say, it's uh, obviously it was heartbreaking for them, but they got revenge on us by beating us 2-1, just a couple of days sort of after, and ended up finishing fourth, so like I say, so I wasn't far out, to be fair, um, but like I say, fair play to Chelsea. Disappointed with Timo Werner, he wasn't sort of playing, he didn't, Really score as many goals as I thought he would because I would have thought he at least got 15, 20 goals. Um, so, sort of disappointed, and I would have thought he at least got 20 goals or something like that. But there you go, it is what it is. Um, you know, so yeah, so that's it really. So, like I say, um, and obviously, 
some of the players they didn't sort of like Tammy Abraham, who's sort of been very strongly linked with Leicester. Um, I'd, I'd be I'd be happy to take him, obviously, you know. But Chelsea are asking sort of like forty, forty five million, which I don't think Leicester will do. Um, but anyway, so that's a different discussion for different days. So it's turned out to be a bit of a longer video than I thought, people. But apologies. <laughs> But it's all good fun, innit? It's all good fun. Have a laugh, innit? So, in second place, the runners-up of the Premier League, I actually had Liverpool. Um, and, obviously, they ended up finishing third. Um, and, obviously, because it was exciting the last day, because third and fourth were there to play for. And the two spots, obviously, were taken by uh, Chelsea and Liverpool. And then ended up finishing third. So, um, very sort of, they did sort of start well and sort of, they've got a sort of couple of decent results and then all of a sudden they just kicked on and they, they just look like the old, old Liverpool really. And obviously probably their, obviously, you know, probably most outstanding player was Mo Salah again. Um, I'll be brutally honest and probably a load of Liverpool fans will probably disagree with me. I think if they didn't have Mo Salah, I think they would be struggling this year more than they probably did, sort of did because he's just banging in the goals for fun as always. So, um, Mane very disappointing as well. Obviously, their goalkeeper scored towards the end of the season as well in that West Brom 95th minute sort of winner. Um, so that was sort of a bit annoying. But anyway, so yeah, fair play to Liverpool. They'll say they got the top four spot and uh, well done to them and they'll be sort of boosting them for next season and challenge for the title again. And obviously, it was no surprise, I did have Man City to win. Even though they didn't have no sort of out-and-out -out strike, even though Aguero was sort of injured and sort of quite a lot of the season, they did end up finishing first. And I, they, well, I predicted them first and they finished first. So, what can you say? Um, you can sort of talk about Man City for a long time. Um, um, so, yeah, so they've been very, very good. Um, and obviously, like I say, probably the first team sort of not to have sort of a striker. Like an out striker, sort of like every game sort of thing. Um, you know, obviously, you can pick out numerous players that are ascending. Um, you know, the centre-backs, I mean, well, what can you say? I mean, obviously, Kevin De Bruyne was probably my favourite player. He's been my favourite player for the last three, four, two or three years. He's just he's just absolutely outstanding. He's a quality player. Phil Foden as well. He just looks an absolute belt of a player, quality player. And I really pray to God that they, England do sort of put him in the starting line because I just think he's England's best player. I really do rate him that highly. I think he's he's that good. He's you know if he's not class already, he's he's, he's so. He's only probably two or three years from being world class, if not he already sort of is in a way. So great talent and uh, I'm looking forward to that. So there we go. So that was my predictions and that's where they all finished. So obviously looking forward to the next season, obviously the 21-22 season and uh, seeing what happens there. But as of all, like I say, I will be doing more videos in the future. I will be probably doing a video, another video in the next sort of within probably next week or something like that and give my predictions for the Euros. Um, obviously with them sort of happening this year, even though it was meant to be last year. And obviously give them what I think England will do and uh, go from there. And obviously the winners, I think that will win the um, Euros and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, so that will be it, folks. And like I say, thanks for putting up with me and my horrible, annoying voice. <laughs> and, uh, and, that was, and that was it. So rolling on next season, I say, the 21-22 Premier League next year. So, that is it. So, as always, people, take care and stay safe. And like I say again, please subscribe to my channel, Fat Boy Sai. And like I say, give me a like and obviously, you know, comments are all welcome. And give me your predictions for sort of next season and what you think is going to happen, um, you know, with the new uh, new teams that have been promoted on the Championship to Premiership. See how they will do it, how they, well they do. And, uh, and obviously with, you know, obviously the old Europa spots, relegation, you know, spots and obviously top four spots. And it'll be interesting to hear from you all. So as always, folks, that is it for now. So as always, take care and stay safe. And I will return for more sort of uh, football predictions in the future. So take care, stay safe, everyone. And I shall catch you again for more football lark. Ta-da, everyone.